the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution happy morning students i hope all are good right i had sent you a link on the solved question answers of your first chapter in chemistry and that was regarding the questions which has come in the previous years with respect to our board exam so i want you all to go through the questions not in your mobile please take a print and then make sure that you revise those questions right that's very important in exam point of view similarly i'll be also sending you the revision notes that is the quick bullet points for each chapter which i'll be sending you as app in your whatsapp okay so last class we were learning about integrated rate equations also about molecularity that is the number of reacting species taking part in a elementary reaction and also about a zero order reaction molecularity and order of reaction the molecularity of a reaction is the number of reactants in an atomic ionic or molecular form which disintegrate or combine to give a chemical reaction in the given cases the molecularity for each reaction is 2 as two reactants collide to form the product but why is it important to know molecularity of a reaction molecularity of a reaction helps to predict the occurrence of a reaction and its mechanism let us see how with the help of some reactions according to the course of a reaction reactions can be of two types elementary reactions or complex reactions elementary reactions are those reactions which occur in one step for example nitrogen peroxide dissociates to form nitrogen dioxide in a single step reaction the molecularity of the reaction is 1 as one molecule of nitrogen peroxide undergoes change to form the product complex reactions are those reactions which occur over a series of steps for example iodic acid reacts with sulfurous acid to form hydrogen iodide and sulfuric acid experimentally the reaction follows a three step mechanism to give the final products the molecularity for such complex reactions cannot be calculated for the overall reaction by just counting the number of reactant molecules that form the product this is because it is highly improbable that all the four molecules of the reactants collide simultaneously instead the molecularity for such complex reactions is calculated for each elementary step or reaction as the molecularity of the overall reaction is not significant for this reaction the molecularity for each elementary step is 2 as two molecules undergo change to give the respective product the molecularity of a reaction can be 1 2 or 3 depending on the number of reactants colliding at a time to react a reaction with one reacting molecule is known as a unimolecular reaction 
that with two reacting molecules is called bimolecular and that with three reacting molecules is called a trimolecular reaction. Molecularity has some important characteristics. It is never zero for any reaction as molecules must disintegrate or combine for a reaction to occur. It is not expected to be greater than three because it is highly improbable that more than three reactants collide simultaneously. Order of reaction is defined as the sum of the powers of the reactants in the rate law expression. Choose the correct option and click Submit. Once we have the rate expression of a reaction, it is easy to find the order of a reaction. We just need to sum up the powers of the reactants in the rate law expression. Here, there are two reactants in the rate law expression, each raised to the power of 1. Thus, the sum of the powers of these two reactants is 2. So, it is an example of a second order reaction. Let's go over some more examples to see reactions of different orders. Consider this reaction. The formation of hydrogen chloride. It being a photochemical reaction, the rate of the reaction does not depend on the concentration of reactants. Rather, it depends on the amount of light absorption. In other words, the rate of the reaction is independent of the concentration of the reactants and so, order of reaction is zero as per the rate law and this is termed as a zero order reaction. Let's consider another reaction. The formation of sulfur dioxide and chlorine from sulfurial chloride. As per the rate law, the rate of reaction depends on the single power of the reactant sulfurial chloride. Thus, order of reaction is 1 and this is termed as first order reaction. The order of a reaction can also be a fraction. This is seen more in multi-step reactions. For example, the order of the multi-step reaction of acetaldehyde forming methane and carbon monoxide is 3 by 2. Now that you know about molecularity and order of reaction, let's determine the order of reaction and molecularity for some complex reactions. Choose the correct option and click Submit. The molecularity of a reaction is the number of reactants in an atomic, ionic or molecular form which disintegrate or combine to give a chemical reaction. The molecularity for complex reactions is calculated for each elementary step or reaction as the molecularity of the overall reaction is not significant. Order of reaction is defined as the sum of the powers of the reactants in the rate law expression. Now we are going to see about a first order reaction in terms of integrated rate equation. Now consider a first order reaction. What is happening actually here? R is the reactant which gets converted to my product P. So R is my reactant which gets converted to my product that is P. So what happens after that if I have to find out my rate right it will be minus dr that is differential rate equation minus dr by dt which is equal to k that is the rate constant into the concentration of my reactant R to the power of 1 because that is my first order reaction. 
Now what happens here? I can bring this R down and I'll take this dt the other side. So it will be minus dr by dt is equal to that is dr by r I'll put here is equal to k dt. Now if I want to remove this minus sign I'll make sure that I put here minus k dt. So this is my equation that is the differential rate equation. Now assume I want to integrate this equation. If I want to integrate this equation what will happen? After integration I will get ln r is equal to minus kt plus i. This will, by my, this will be my first equation. That is ln r will be equal to minus kt plus i. Now what I will do at time when t is equal to 0 that is the initial time when t is equal to 0 assume r is equal to r naught that is the initial concentration of my reactant is equal to r naught. Now substitute the value of t and r in this equation. So what I will get ln r naught will be equal to minus k into 0 plus i which is equal to ln r naught equal to i because minus k into 0 will be 0. So ln r naught is equal to i. So I got the value for i which is my integration constant. Now mark it as equation 2. Now what will happen? I got the value for i. Let me substitute this in equation 1. So substitute 2 in 1. If I am going to substitute the value for 2 in 1, what I will get? Ln r is equal to minus kt plus ln r naught. Understood children? In place of i, I got the value for ln r naught which I have substituted here. Now what I will do? Ln r by r naught. I am bringing it here on the other side because both are ln here which is equal to minus kt. Now how will I get the value for k? k will be equal to 1 by t into ln r naught by r. How this came on the top? Because if I, this is minus k, if I want to bring it here, what will happen? R naught will go to the numerator and R will come down as a denominator. So this is the value for k. k is equal to 1 by t ln of R naught by R. So this I will mark it as equation 3 and this I will make it as equation 4. To now for a first order reaction my rate will be the differential rate equation of reactant with respect to the time taken which is k into r power 1 because the rate is directly proportional to the first power of the reactant for a first order reaction. So interchanging I got the value like this after taking the integration this is my first equation we are calculating the equation expression for time t when it is 0 and the initial concentration r naught where I got the value for i. Substituting the value of i, I got that is my third equation from that finding out the value for k. Now what am I going to do? We are going to see at two different time intervals what happens to the rate of reaction that is at time t1. When the time is t1, my rate will be r1. That is the reactant concentration will be r1. At time t2 it will be r2 right that will be my concentration of the reactant r2. Now substitute this in this equation that is in equation 3 you take for time t1 and you take for time t2. Let us see what happens ok. So ln r1 is equal to minus k t1 plus ln r0. This will be my equation 5. Now what happens at time t2? Let us see ln r2 is equal to minus kt2 plus 
ln r naught which is equation 6. Now if I am going to substitute 6 from 5, let me subtract, I will subtract 6 from 5 equation, what happens ln r1 minus ln r2 is equal to minus kt1 minus minus kt2 when we do these two minus minus they get cancel each other so ln r0 will not be there so here this will be equal to k into t2 minus p1 this will be ln r1 minus ln r0 r2 so i'll take it as ln r1 by r2 is equal to k into t2 minus t1 understood children how did you get this right by subtracting equation 6 from 5 now let's see what happens so from this what is the value for k k will be 1 by t2 minus t1 into ln r1 by r2 so this will be my equation 7 so this is the value for k right you understood now this is the value for k now we got one more thing that k is equal to 1 by t ln of r not by r right we got this also in the to remove this ln you can put a natural to remove this natural logarithm what you should do you should multiply with 2.303 so k is equal to 2.303 by t log of r naught by r so this will be the equation to calculate the value for k now just like our zero order equation y is equal to mx plus c similarly you have a graph here explaining ln r is equal to minus kt plus ln r naught that is ln r is equal to minus kt plus ln r naught y is equal to mx plus c so if you draw a graph with t and ln r again you get a slope as minus k and intercept will be r naught just like our zero order equation so the graph will be given to you either in the exam where you need to draw it i mean you need to mark the slope and intercept or you may be asked to draw the diagram also for the zero and first order reaction so i hope you understood this children before getting into our half life period let us see an example with first order reaction that is especially in case of gaseous reactants now if you see a first order reaction where reactant A reacts to give products B and C where all of them are in the gaseous state. Now Pi be the initial pressure of A. Reactant A's initial pressure is Pi and Pt is the total pressure which means at time T the total pressure of the reaction will be Pa plus Pb plus Pc that is the reactants plus product where Pa, Pb, Pc are the partial pressures of A, B and C. We have learnt about Dalton's law of partial pressure. You remember the total pressure of the reaction will be sum of the partial pressures of each of the component taking part in the reaction. So let's assume at time T is equal to 0. What is happening? There will be only the pressure at the reactant A and at the product side there will be no change in the there will be no pressure formed here there will be some amount of pressure but what happens as the time goes on there will be a decrease in the pressure of A that is X atmosphere let us assume that will be the decrease in pressure of A. So at time T what happens there will be increase in pressure in the product side which was assumed to be X atmosphere again. So let us consider the reaction side. A giving B and C at time T is equal to 0, Pi is the initial pressure of A. Here it is 0, there is no pressure formed because products are not yet formed. 
Now after the time interval t when t from 0 when it becomes t the decrease in the pressure is x. So from the initial pressure p i x amount is getting decreased. So p i minus x will be the pressure of a. What is happening with b and c there is a decrease increase in the pressure with x. So it will be x and x here in both b and c. I hope you are able to follow children. So I told you Pt is the total pressure. So Pt will be equal to Pa plus Pb plus Pc. So now let us substitute the value of A, B and C. So Pt will be equal to Pa which is Pi minus x. So I put Pi minus x plus Pb is x plus Pc is also x. So I substitute the values here. After substituting you can see minus x and plus x can get cancelled. So what I will get Pt will be equal to Pi plus x. So Pt is equal to Pi plus x. I want to know what is my x. So x is equal to Pt minus Pi. So this is the value for x I got. Now since I got the value for x can I substitute here. So I will be getting what is my Pa. What is my Pb and what is my Pc? So now Pa is equal to Pi minus x. So Pi minus x where x is equal to Pt minus Pi. So now Pi minus Pt minus into minus will be again plus. So it will be Pi plus Pi which is 2 Pi. So 2 Pi minus Pt. This is the value for Pa. And what is Pb? Pb is nothing but Pt minus Pi. What is Pc? Again Pt minus Pi. Now what is our rate constant? Rate constant is equal to 2.303 by T log of Pi by Pa. For Pa. If it is for Pb, Pi by Pb or Pi by Pc. So for Pa, it will be Pi by, substitute the value for Pa. 2 Pi minus Pt. So you get the value for K. Now how we get questions in our exam? They will give the value for P initial pressure, final pressure and the value for X once we find out we will substitute here and the time interval will be given we can find out the rate constant. So this is how we will be getting questions in our exam. So I hope you are able to follow this children right. So now we will get into half life period. We were seeing about first order reaction and also about a reaction that is taking place in the gas phase. Now we will get into half life of a reaction. What is half life? When we say that is reduced to one half that is a reaction which is taking place say reactant is reacting to give the products. So at that time the time in which the concentration of the reaction it gets reduced to one half. The whole time is getting reduced to half. So when the time is getting reduced to half, what will happen to the concentration? That should also get reduced to half. The time in which the concentration of the reactant is reduced to one half is called as half life of a reaction or half life period. So how it will work? Let us see. For a zero order reaction, K is equal to R0 minus R by T. This is what we derived in the last class. So now at time T is equal to half. When T becomes half, the concentration of the reactant R will be R0 by 2. The initial concentration is also getting reduced to half. Now when we substitute this here, K will be equal to R0 minus R0 by 2 divided by T half. So this actually what happens once you take an LCM to R0 minus R0 by T half which is equal to R0 by 2 T half. Right? So K is equal to R0 by 2 T half. So if I want to take T half on the other side T half will be is equal to R0 by 2K. This is the value for the half life of a reaction for a zero order reaction. 
half life period for a zero order reaction i'll explain you again from the last class we have derived the value for the rate constant k which is equal to r not minus r by t now this derivation we are going to deal when time is reduced to half so if time is reduced to half my concentration also get reduced to half that is by 2 so if i am going to substitute in the place of r as r not by 2 i get r not minus r not by 2 by t half after solving this i get r not by 2 t half when i interchange the value with k and t half t half is equal to r not by 2 k you understood children so from this equation what did you understand the half life period is directly proportional to my initial concentration and it is inversely proportional to my rate constant are you able to get me children t half is directly proportional to my initial concentration which means whenever there is an increase in the initial concentration my t half will also increase and whenever it there is an increase here this will decrease as it is inversely proportional to my rate constant so this is with respect to zero order reaction what happens when it comes to first order reaction in first order reaction we know k is equal to 2.303 by t log of r not by r again at time t is equal to t half that is when it is reduced my r will become again r not by 2 now if i am going to substitute this here i get k will be equal to 2.303 by t half log of r not by r not by 2 so what happens here this r not by 2 becomes r2 goes there on the top so r not r not will get cancel so here k will be equal to 2.303 by t half of log 2 what is log 2 log 2 is equal to 0.301 so you get now t half i'll take on the other side which will be equal to 2.303 by k into 0.301 right value for log 2 So now t half will be equal to 0.693 by k. This is the value for t half for a first order reaction. From this reaction, what did we understand? The half life period for a first order reaction is independent on the concentration of the reactant. It is only related to the rate constant. It's a constant value, 0.693 by k. It depends only on the value of k. it is independent on the concentration of the reactant but here in case of zero order reaction it is directly proportional to my r not here there is no role for my reactant it is independent on the concentration of the reactant and it is only dependent on the rate constant value that is the value for half life period it's a definite question k will be given to you you will be asked to value or calculate the value for t half we anyway i told you we'll be solving the problems in a separate video that time we'll be trying to do maximum problems in that now we'll go for some different type of reaction which is called as pseudo first order reaction see the last topic for today which is pseudo first order reaction uh, we we'll, uh, also heard this word of pseudo even before pseudo liquid super cooled liquids pseudo solids like that right what is pseudo means pseudo first order means it is not exactly a first order reaction but it assumes to be a first order reaction practically when it is been worked out the example best example is hydrolysis of ethyl acetate acetate ethyl acetate is an ester you know covor group it's an ester what is exactly happening here it's a chemical reaction between two substances where the presence of one substance is actually excess in amount the presence of one substance is excess in amount so what happens is that there will be no change in the consumption that is the concentration of that particular substance actually remains constant it does not get altered at all now if you see this example 
ethyl acetate on hydrolysis gives acetic acid and ethanol ethyl alcohol right at time t is equal to 0 when the reaction is about to start 0.01 mole of ethyl acetate is present this is around 10 and here it is 0 0 because no product is formed but when time reaches a value of t this is getting consumed completely but this becomes 9.9 .9, a very little consumption of water and here it reaches my product value 0 0.01. So, if I am going to write the rate of the reaction rate will be K dash of CH3COO C2H5 into H2O where these two are my reactants. We know the rate of reaction is the product of the concentration of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric power. Since it is 1 mole 1 mole we write here K dash into ethyl acetate and water. But the concentration of water is always constant means it is not been consumed that much as when compared to that of ethyl acetate. So, what I am going to do if this becomes constant you do not consider this for the rate of reaction. So, rate becomes equal to K into CH3COO C2H5 where my K value is equal to K dash into H2O. So, K dash into H2O I have made it as K into CH3COO C2H5. So, though there are two reactants taking part in this chemical reaction, it is considered to be a first order reaction. That is why we call this reaction as pseudo first order reaction. You understood this? What do you mean by pseudo first order reaction? Another example is inversion of cane sugar. Let us see what happens with inversion of cane sugar. What does cane sugar means? C12 H22O11. Right. So, in this case, if I am going to write C12 H22O11, which on hydrolysis in presence of a mineral acid, it will be giving me two molecules that is C6H12O6 and C6H12O6. Now, how do I write my rate? Rate will be is equal to K into C12 H22O11 which is my concentration of the cane sugar. Here again there is no change in the concentration of my water. So, that is considered as constant. So, rate is dependent on only one of the concentration of the reactant. So, such reactions we call it as pseudo first order reaction. Children. Now, you will watch a video with respect to this uh, reactions and then um, we will get back to the next class that is following the temperature dependence and also collision theory. I hope these videos you are helping you a lot and uh, take down the notes necessary from the videos. Also, um, make sure that these things derivations are very important. Zero order, first order, half life period and pseudo first order. These four are always a repeated questions in our board. Any one can come. So, with this we are winding our chapter, I mean the class for today. We will get back into the last topic in the next class. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed the class. Please make sure that you practice these derivations regularly. Problems will be soon solved to you after this chapter gets over. Okay, so take care children, stay home, stay safe. See you in the next class. Take care. Bye. The half-life of a reaction is the time required for the concentration of a reactant to decrease to half of its initial concentration. This parameter is very useful as it describes the speed of a reaction. If the initial concentration of the rate determining reactant is A0, then its concentration after one half-life will be half of the initial concentration. Further, one can calculate the concentration after one more half-life. Now, let us substitute the value of concentration of the reactant at time t in the integrated rate law form for zero order reactions. The final equation for half-life of zero order reactions is t half is equal to initial concentration of the reactant upon 2K. Now, 
Let us replace the values in the integrated rate law form for the first order reactions. The final equation is shown here. With the A0 values on the left hand side of the equation, we get natural log of A0 divided by 0 0.5 into A0 is equal to natural log 2. Simplifying this equation will result in T half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K. It shows that the half-life of a zero-order reaction depends on the initial concentration of the reactant. But the half-life of first-order reactions does not depend on the concentration of the reactant. Let us recap what we have learned so far.